Hello, well, in this video we're going to be talking about the direct comparison test for testing for convergence of series. Sometimes we can make a direct comparison between two series. In this section and the next one, we will have a series, a sum from k equals 1 to infinity of a sub k that we want to know about whether it converges or diverges. And what we'll do is we'll compare it to a similar known series, a sum from k equals 1 to infinity of b sub k, which we do know whether it converges or diverges. Recall that we know when geometric and p-series converge and when they diverge. So the sum from k equals 1 to infinity of b sub k will usually be a p-series or a geometric series. We know that if a sub k is greater than or equal to b sub k for all natural numbers k, then we also know that the sum from k equals 1 to n of a sub k is greater than or equal to the sum from k equals 1 to n of b sub k. And therefore, taking limits, we know that the k the sum from k equals 1 to infinity of a sub k is greater than or equal to the sum from k equals 1 to infinity of b sub k. So if the b sub k is known to diverge to infinity, that makes the a sub k sum, uh, the sum on the right diverges to infinity, then that makes the sum on the left diverge to infinity as well. On the other hand, if we know that a sub k is positive terms but less than or equal to b for all natural numbers k, then we also know that um, a, the sum from a sub, of a sub k from k equals 1 to n is less than or equal to the sum from k equals 1 to n of b sub k and taking limits. We know that the sum from k equals 1 to infinity of a sub k is less than or equal to the sum from k equals 1 to infinity of b sub k. So if the sum b sub k is known to converge, Then we know that uh, that a sub k converges. Uh, as well. Okay. So if we can show that that uh, on the sequence level, a series has positive terms that are less than the terms from a known convergent series, then the series converges and converges something to something less than or equal to the sum of the known convergent series. On the other hand, if the series is term for term greater than the series, than the terms of a series that is known to diverge to infinity, then the original series diverges to infinity as well. So let's look at some examples. Here's three of them for you to test. See if you can work these out yourself and then we'll come back. The trick's going to be to try to compare them to a, um, well, it'll be either be a P-series or a geometric series, and think about which parts of these things are going to dominate, and that can help you decide what to compare it to. See if you can work them out yourself. Press pause now. Okay, well, hopefully you tried these yourself. Either way, what's or not, we're going to go through these. So here's the first one. The sum from k equals 1 to infinity of a sub k is the sum from k equals 1 to infinity of 3 to the k minus 2k minus 5 or 5k plus 5 to the k power. Well, when we look at series, we should notice that uh, in this particular case, in the denominator, this exponential 5 to the k is going to dominate. Uh, this, this 5 times k is not going to be nearly as important and not nearly as important uh, as, as influential in what happens when k gets big. So we can just basically ignore the 5 times k and leave only the 5 to the k power in the denominator. Okay, and similarly, in the top, the 3 to the k is going to dominate. That exponential is going to dominate over this polynomial part. So when k is big, really the 3 to the k determines what, what direction this thing is going. So if we eliminate the, uh, the less consequential parts, we're left with 3 to the k over 5 to the k, which is 3 fifths to the k, which is a geometric series. That geometric series converges, so we suspect that this one converges too. Now, we have to also get the inequalities going the right way. Uh, but if you make a numerator smaller, that makes the fraction smaller. If you make the denominator bigger, that makes the fraction bigger. Talk about positive fractions here. So. In the top, we have 3 to the k power minus 2k minus 5. Well, that's less than 3 to the k because k is positive here, and we're subtracting from 3 to the k. 
And in the bottom, we got 5k plus 5 to the k power. The 5k is positive, so that's adding to the 5 to the k makes it bigger than 5 to the k power. Furthermore, for k is greater than 2, this part right here is uh, positive. When k is uh, 1, we get a negative here. Let's see, if you put k is 1, you get 3 minus uh, 7 is negative 4. When k is 2, this is 9. Uh, minus 9 is 0, but once you get up to 3, um, this thing becomes positive and it stays positive from there on out. The bottom's always positive. So for k's bigger than 2, we're dealing with positive terms. So, so at least for k's bigger than 2, uh, we have this term is positive, and it's less than 3 fifths, 3 to the k over 5 to the k, which is 3 fifths of the k. Oh, well, we know that that sum then here, that infinite sum has to be less than or equal to that infinite sum of this known sum. It's a geometric. In fact, we even know what that sum is. It's the first term times 1 over 1 minus the base. Uh, 5 fifths minus 3 fifths is 2 fifths. That means then you're dividing by that. So that means you're multiplying by 5 halves. The 5s cancel and you get 3 over 2. So we know that, so the conclusion is, this series converges to a value less than or equal to 3 halves by direct comparison to the convergent geometric series. Okay. Notice when you're making your conclusion, we say what, what uh, test we use, a direct comparison test. We decide whether it converges or diverges. But we also have to verify that we get the hypothesis of that test to work and then get the... Uh, conclusion set up there. For the next one, we're summing k equals 1 to infinity of k plus 2 over k squared. The 2 is not that important in the top. The k is going to dominate. So we end up with k over k squared, which is 1 over k. That's a, uh, that's a, I mean, a harmonic series, which is going to diverge, a p series, where p is negative 1. So we have k plus 2 is uh, greater than k which means k plus 2 over k squared is greater than k over k squared, which is 1 over k. So the sum from k equals 1 to infinity of k plus 2 over k squared is greater than or equal to the sum from k equals 1 to infinity 1 over k, but that is infinity, so we know this one diverges as well. So the sum that we're looking for of k plus 2 over k squared diverges to infinity by direct comparison to the divergent harmonic series. Okay, looking at the next one here, eliminate everything except the leading term and compare the resulting convergent p-series. So again, this is a polynomial on the top and bottom. The biggest uh, power term, the leading term, is what dominates. So you can just eliminate everything at the top except for the first term of k, limit everything at the bottom except for the k cubed. k over k cubed is 1 over k squared. Now, if we get the inequalities go the right way, then we can get a, uh, a direct comparison there. So we suspect, uh, you know, well, we know the sum of 1 over k squared converges, so we expect this thing to converge. And, you know, sort of at the same kind of general rate as 1 over k squared does. Okay, so uh, k minus 3 is less than k. So that means that putting that's going to make the, the fraction smaller by putting the minus 3. And all these terms here, since k is positive, 3k squared plus k plus 5 is positive. So when we add that to k cubed, we're bigger than k cubed. I should say k cubed. So uh, if the making the bottom bigger and the top smaller makes the whole fraction smaller, so that's less than k over k cubed, which is 1 over k squared. So when we sum up this infinite series, it has to be less than or equal to this sum of this p series. Well, that's a p series where k where uh, 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 p is negative 2, okay? And so that p series is going to converge, okay? Now, actually, we, we in an earlier video, I told you what it converges to, but uh, it, then this series converges to less than that. So we can state our conclusion this way. This sum of this series converges by direct comparison to the convergent uh, p series 1 over uh, k squared, or 
if we'd rather write that as k to the negative 2. In fact, I think I will write that as just it's just k to the negative 2. So you can directly see it as a, a p-series. That puts it in the form that we like to have for a p-series. So the key here to using the direct comparison test is to find a suitably known series. And we have to be, um, the way to do that is basically think about function dominance that we talked about a little bit earlier in the, in the uh, course couple videos back. Uh, but we also have to be somewhat fortunate to have the inequalities go in the right direction. So if we know term by term that we're greater than those from a convergent series or less than those from a, uh, the t if we know the terms are greater than those from a divergent series or less than those from a convergent series, then the direct comparison Oh, the direct comparison is used. I'm sorry, shouldn't have changed that. If it's greater than a convergent, it doesn't tell you anything. Less than a convergent, it works, right? And greater than a divergent works, but it's less than the divergent, it eh, doesn't work. So you have to get those inequalities going the right way. In the next video, we're going to talk about what to do if you think you got the right thing, but it's not quite exactly like you'd want it to be in terms of the direction of those inequalities. That's called the limit comparison test. We'll hit that next time.